Welcome back to Pacific Drive. Our mission is to explore the deep zone, map it out, figure out what's going on in there, because no one has been there in over 10 years, I believe. But before that, I want to do some resource gathering outside of the deep zone. I want thermosap crystals, plus just more kind of everything. And apparently, according to the in-game encyclopedia, thermosap crystals are found in the Scorch, which are these places that have this icon, the little heat squigglies. So there, 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 and there are the Scorch. So I'm going to head there and I'll bring you back when something interesting happens. Oh, right. It's these things, these sap compressors that have the thermosap crystals. Yeah, I think I got a couple of these before. I just totally forgot that that's where they come from. Found a new lab report. I need your help. Read through the data. Look at the numbers. I've checked every equation, every result. The batteries were consistent. The quality of the materials were pure. And yet, nothing on paper could really truly explain the disparity in the results. The fact is, the materials in Chamber A were exposed for longer than those in Chamber B, despite the experiment running for the same exact amount of time. Please, I beg you, I'm at my wit's end. Help me find an explanation. And hurry. We've already deployed a dozen setups like this. They're already running out in the field. I fear if we don't get ahead of this, it's going to be bad. Oh, hold on. New anomaly. Fallen firmament. Whoa. A lot of things are falling around here. Hold up. What are these? Are these Olympia fragments? Olympium vein. Yes! Ah, oh, what do I need? Ooh. Recommends a magnetic hammer. I just have a normal one. Could I craft one, possibly? I don't think I've upgraded my workbench inside of the car to an advanced one, have I? I can't even make a normal impact hammer. Have I even researched the magnetic hammer? I'm not even sure if I have. Well, let me see if a normal hammer can do anything. I'm sure if it does work, it won't be optimal, but... At least I can get something. Okay, it's taking down the health, but quite slowly. What if I do this? That is working really, really slowly. Um. Yeah, no, I might be able to crack, like, one. And I can't even make another impact hammer, so... That is going to have to wait. But at least now I know where they are and what they look like. about the revenants. It's because, because I saw Alan the night of the accident during the mass hallucination. Except, I'm not sure it was a hallucination. We had a tradition. When we were both working late, he swept by my lab for a coffee break at some ungodly hour. That night, he visited, we talked, the coffee burned my tongue, nothing out of the ordinary. Seconds later, the gamma ray surge swept through the facility, and the roof caved in. I looked for him in the aftermath. I couldn't find him anywhere, because he hadn't been in my lab. He was ground zero at the accident site, miles away in the deep zone. But I saw him, touched him, smelled his cologne. He was there, possibly there, more than a hallucination. You never reported that? Admit to Arda that I communed with my husband's ghost. When they were already looking for ways to push me out, not a chance. I gave them my technology and my home, but I'd be goddamn before I let anything destroy my professional credibility. And this remnant? It's my last chance to know if what I saw was true. If it came from the well, or if it was all in my head. Things we spoke of. Things that... Like you've seen a ghost.
good news. I can replicate Alan's suppression method. We'll stand some chance of halting the gamma ray burst from the well. Thirty years later, my late husband still manages to impress. They're figuring out how to keep you alive once the reaction gets going, however. It's harder, but I have an idea. Francis, I need to read. Come on. We know that as soon as the car gets to the well, the trigger will be instant. Once this remnant expends its energy, gamma radiation will erupt from the well, and the driver will be at ground zero taking the worst of it. But can we activate the gateway as soon as they make contact? It's tricky. Too early, and we may interrupt whatever reaction process the remnant carries out. Too late, and it's bad news for the driver. There's too many unknowns. Only the driver will know the right time to use it. How can you be sure they'll live long enough to make that call? The ARC device has been transmitting data every single second since it was installed. Every drop of fuel, every spark plug that car's lit, I have on record. You've been running experiments the entire time, with the driver as the guinea pig. The mere act of being alive is the biggest experiment of all, dear. Is that another one of Alan's sayings? That one's all mine. Driver, we've seen that car protect you this entire time. It's triggered a gateway in your time of need. It's ferried you back to the garage through every circumstance and obstacle and bump in the road. So we can trust that it'll protect you long enough to get you away from whatever and wherever you end up. Still sounds like a heavy dose of blind faith to me. Could be. Oh, there's one last part of this, and it's waiting for you back at the auto shop. Take your time. Enjoy the view. Fresh new upgrade waiting for you, driver. Straight out of the oven. What do you think, Francis? It could work. <laughs> it will work. We don't know anything about the well, but the driver doesn't have to go in completely empty-handed. You're removing the ARC device's limiter and overloading its charge capacity. Right. So no matter how much energy the car is getting blasted with, the ARC will be able to overpower it to open a gateway. It's the only way to extract the driver from whatever's going to happen at the trigger point. A and then we use Alan's suppression technique to keep the whole thing from completely exploding? This sounds like a lot. <laughs> yeah. Not much of a choice, though. Device mods looking good. Now you can head out and overcharge it. We'll give you instructions when you're en route. All right. New facts. More like facts machine, am I right? Our goal now is to reach here, and I want to unlock a relatively quick way to get up here. So I think it's best if I unlock this area here. Because then we can just go to E6, then the highway, then the highway, then over. So yeah, I'm going to head up here, and then to this zone, and I'll bring you back when something interesting happens. Found a message. The Lynn Fair. Arda advertised it as a good old-fashioned small-town get-together. A miniature world fair of sorts for the hard-working government employees and their families that live in Sierra Town. The flyers and brochures I've gotten my hands on promised all manner of things mundane and fantastical. Kiss your low-tech washing machine goodbye. Take home this limb nebulizer and zap your clothes and diapers clean. Why break your back trimming your lawn when limb tech can transform your grass into something more? This push to get limb tech into the homes of zone residents, housewives in particular, was a deliberate and strategic move. The cynical reason, and most popular interpretation, is that it was a PR push to rehabilitate Lim Tech's image. By 1973, there's been enough reports of radioactive fallout and inexplicable disappearances that suspicion of what Arna was doing was hot. Where were you when the Sierra incident happened? The base camp about 20 miles out of town. Sirens went off during dinner. We barely had time to wonder whether it was a drill or a drill. Of a shock Luckily, we've been through the disaster procedure days before. We dove under our tables to pick cover. We were just kids, and at first thrilled for the drama unfolding in real time. It was hours before Arda came to extract us. By that time, we'd scrambled up onto a hill to signal for help and saw the... the... Take your time. 
it's been 20 years and I still can't go anywhere near a county fair of any sort. What did they tell you had happened? Nothing. They were all business. Hurrying us under the trucks with boarded up windows. We weren't even allowed back in our cabins to pack our belongings. They breezed us out of the zone. It wasn't until days later when most of us were deposited in an orphanage that well, we learned that our parents died. Jesus Christ. That's horrifying. New logbook. Anomaly encounters number five. It was pure nonsense at first. They were often garbled, and the ones we could decipher made no sense. The dates were wrong, and they talked about made-up events. Except they weren't made up, you see. It was the gasoline shortage one I remember first, because it was so accurate. We had exactly that shortage two weeks later, down to the gallon. Then there was that lost technician. I thought no one would believe me, but my supervisor and I listened to the one which predicted that Baker boy being dissolved. He was. Right on time. But after that, as soon as we had them all deciphered, they stopped. New facts? Hey, Bill. You notice how chocolate tastes different lately? I mean, different to back home? Like, kinda slimy? For some reason, when I was here at B1, it wouldn't let me do anything except teleport back home. I couldn't travel from there anywhere else. It said dead end, and I don't really understand why, because there's a whole bunch of places we can go from B1. Anyway, whatever, it's fine. Let's just try approaching the destination from the other side. So I'm going to head to G1, and then D1, and then here. Oh yes, and with all the thermosap crystals that I've gathered, over a hundred, I was able to outfit my entire car with armored panels and doors and everything. Gave the car a bit of a paint job at some decals. Time to do some mining. How many fragments are we going to get from these? Oh, nice. Takes them out in just one hit. So just a couple for each one. Alright. Hopefully I don't need that many. New facts? Tardigrade count further increasing. We're now passing 250 TPM. Approaching safe operating limit. This is... We didn't expect this kind of growth. What are they doing in there? Are they... Spelling out letters? Hmm. It seems that where I just went, A4, doesn't actually connect to the quest objective. However, this will, and it can be accessed from the highway. So, I'm gonna head to G1, D1, and then unlock this. New facts? The weather outside of the Appalachians today is looking great, folks. Remember, if you're hiking high into the woods, to... Okay, so I just realized something really silly. I don't know why, but I've been dismissing blowtorches completely without ever really looking at what they're actually for. They're for repairing. I don't have to repair everything with repair putty. I can do it with a friggin' blowtorch. And look how much faster it is. Now, it's not actually going to last that long if you look at the durability in the bottom left. This is getting used up pretty fast. It does cost 80 marsh eggs to make, though, which is a bit on the pricey side. Oh my god, I just finally made the Bio Lantern, which is the highest grade light source you can make, above the crew flashlight. It has, I think, about three times the dur durability. And look at this. Freaking neon light, like, bug zapper. It's gonna burn my eyes out. Let's install a junction restabilizer. That will allow us to send a, or I think use a scanner charge to scramble a destabilized zone, which I think means we can restabilize an unstable zone. If I'm not mistaken, like let's say we want to change D1. Can I, do I have to scan it first? Oh, it says press R to re-roll. Mm, 
Yeah, it looks like it changes the conditions and like the route analysis. Now it is stable. Okay, yeah, so it just re-rolls the entire thing. Cool. Let's also install a junction bypass kit, which now will allow me to skip that like halfway point when I go to a highway. So I can just go straight to the actual highway point. Should save a lot of time. Whoa, that looks incredibly cool. Let's install an incident board. Lists the number of days since your last incident. I don't think I've died. 27 runs without an accident. Just installed a parts locker. I don't think I really need it, but it basically allows you to store a car part per slot. So if you have a lot of car parts, a lot of spares, then that should make things easier. I don't really have that issue though. And I'm also not sure if that matters now that I have that unlimited storage thing. Like, okay, if I was to take this panel, can I not just put it in here? Yeah, you can, and it has infinite storage, although, to be fair, it is annoying to have to search for it. That actually makes me curious. What does it look like if I put it in here? Yeah, it shows a green light for the ones that are occupied. Okay, that does make it easier to kind of sort stuff. Let's install another roof rack. Let's try installing a resource radar. I look like a, some like bizarre storm chaser vehicle. Yeah, so it's supposed to scan for resources. Costs some power to use, it's an ability. I don't know how useful it's actually going to be. Let's try it out. Let's head to the Anomaly Barricade. Okay, the resource radar is actually really useful. So when you press the button, it sends out a scan and it shows you di distances with icons of what the resource is and those stay on your screen for maybe 10 seconds or so. That's actually really useful. New lab report. Almost 150 years ago, William Sturgeon demonstrated the first electromagnet, lifting nine pounds of iron with the current taken from a single battery. The doors to electromagnetic research were thrown open that day. Tomorrow, we'll take what may be the most significant step forward since Sturgeon. Limb technology has allowed us to shape smaller, denser, and ever more powerful electromagnets. This year, we demonstrated the most efficient pulsed field magnet to date, running even cooler than we had expected. It's all been prelude to what comes next. For tomorrow, my friends, we shall switch on the most powerful electromagnet yet devised. It's going to get a little warm down in Lab 5, but what we'll be demonstrating will also be stable, safe, and very exciting. It's all thanks to our research, your research, here at Arda. Now arriving at our quest objective, the Anomaly Barricade. Give us the rundown, Francis. What? Me? The electrical grid is your department. But you know the plan as well as I do. So you'd rather trust me than have to speak up for yourself? <sighs> Guess you're on your own, driver. Good luck. Okay, fine. The regular anchors aren't enough to overcharge the arc device to the level we need. But there's an old anomaly barricade we can piggyback onto. It's archaic technology and early attempts to stop anomalies from drifting out into the wider Olympic Peninsula. It worked for some time. Until it didn't. But long enough to get the old... What is that? The barricade's in bad shape, but what's a little rampant voltage leakage? Whoa! Like the ghosts and goblins of the deep zone will mind. And if they do, all the better for Francis. Huh? Blacksmith. Throw stuff up and then it slams it down? Whoo! Electrify the entire barricade, and we'll have all the power we need. You heard him. Lord, driver. Gotcha. Now you're near the 
near the barricade's operating station. Can you get in there and look around? We need something that'll give us the lay of the land. I'm hoping there's going to be chargers along the way because I have a little bit of a problem with my battery. I am out of recharge. I didn't bring as much as I would have liked to. I ran out of plasma and I didn't make any extra um, like the simple battery chargers, the battery jumper thing. So I have been just finding as many batteries as I can and making jumpers along the way, which has kept me going, but it's kind of pushing it to the limit. I think I have enough to make at least one more jumper, though, and my battery's at about 70. So, I think I'll be alright. That's green already, so that's fine. Optional. Scan barricade map in the operations tower. Is this the operations tower? Oh yeah, there it is. This map found at the top of oh. I'm uploading the barricade map to your arc device. By my calculations, if you electrify all eight posts, you'll have all the power you need. Eight, eight, eight posts. All right. Does it seem right to you? I, I, I think so. Yeah, I, I ran the numbers a few times, and I... Then get to it, driver. Okay, let me see how many recharge things I can make. I can make two more. All right. Yeah. That should be fine. I'm going to save him because it's still pretty high and maybe I'll find a recharge station. My car's been in better condition for sure, but... Yeah, it's good enough. Here they are. So we just go in a big ring, basically just go straight. Alright. I get the feeling there aren't going to be any recharge stations, though. And I can't be stopping to do this, so let's just do this once. Okay, almost full. That should definitely be enough. Of course, I'm going to be going fast, so it probably would have been enough anyway, because the faster I go, the more power I make. Let's go! myself a little nitro boost every once in a while, especially on these straightaways. Looking good, driver. Good 
to go. Shit. Oh, you grabbed me. That's why I was being pulled. Oh, I thought I had a flat or something. Come on. Come on. and holding steady. Good. Then we're all set. The arc device is ready to go. It'll hold that charge for as long as we need it. Probably shouldn't put it to my tongue then. Oh wow, yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of power going on there. Storm's coming. Let's go straight. Straight for it. Oh, God. Damn near 90 degrees. Ah. Telling what that remnant's going to unleash. Hmm. Hey, driver. I sent you something, if you don't mind taking a look. Get item from Oppie's Numa tube. In memoriam. Never forget. Ride together forever. Let's go. Why is his favorite cryptid of them all? Oh, not too much to ask. Uh, if you could put it on your dashboard, so Tobias can come along for the ride for wherever you're going. Uh, but don't feel obligated by any means. That is incredibly sweet. Damn! Look at that big boy. New facts? The Olympic Exclusion Zone's only and best pirate radio station. Better than any of those English Channel amateurs. Well, I'm going to end the episode here. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when we return, we're going to head to the end of the road. <laughs>